everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. If you're new to my channel, then welcome. I mostly make sewing videos, but a little while ago I made a video where I followed a whole bunch of recipes for a 1915 cookbook while wearing costumes based on dresses from 1915. That video got a lot of really mixed feedback. Some people loved it, some people really, really hated it, but for the most part people seem to enjoy it and I've gotten a lot of requests to make another one. So I decided I'd move this into a different decade and follow a bunch of recipes from the book The Silent Hostess Treasure Book, which was published in 1930. Now in my last video I worked really hard to put together a Sunday dinner, with all of these side dishes and appetizers and even the evening coffee. And though this book has suggestions for entire meals, it doesn't have recipes for all of the things featured in those meals. This book was published by the General Electric Company, who was trying to use it to sell refrigerators. So if a recipe didn't require cold storage in some way, then they didn't include it. And since I want all of my recipes to come from a single source, I couldn't really piece together a proper Sunday dinner like I did in my last video. Instead, I'm just going to be following a whole bunch of recipes and trying to lay it out on my table and make it look pretty, even if they don't necessarily all go together. I've already selected and purchased ingredients for all the recipes that I want to follow from this book, and I've also written them out onto paper so I won't be getting stuff on this as I bake. Now just before getting into this, I want to give a little bit of a disclaimer. I'm not a professional cook. I'm not an especially good cook. I'm somewhat competent when I have a really thorough recipe and access to Google, but when it comes to a very sparse recipe that was written for someone who has a lot more experience cooking than I do, and is for a dish that I've never eaten or never seen, with ingredients I'm not super used to cooking, it usually doesn't turn out that well. <laughs> I could definitely make this a lot easier on myself and only make things that I'm somewhat familiar with and do a lot of research for recipes prior to following their instructions, but I feel like that takes some of the fun and adventure out of it. So I'm just following the instructions in this book and I'm going to try and make up anything that I don't know how to do. Because of that and my lack of experience of cooking in general, things don't always turn out that well. So if that's going to really annoy you and frustrate you, then this might not be the video for you. But if you want to be somewhat entertained while I try and make a whole bunch of weird dishes from the 1930s, then boy are you in the right place. So speaking of those dishes, I'm going to be making a red raspberry cocktail luncheon canapes, chicken pie, spinach casserole, ginger ale fruit salad, fruit salad dressing, vegetable super salad, molasses cake, baked custard, maple walnut sauce, a maple parfait, pineapple raspberry aid, and cheese biscuits. A lot of these seem less involved than the recipes I followed in the first video, so I used that as a justification to take on more of them. And that might backfire on me, but we'll just have to wait and see. So on that note, I'm just going to go ahead and get started, and I really hope that you enjoy! So the thing I actually have to do first is make ginger ale ice cubes for the pineapple raspberry aid. I don't have an ice cube tray, I couldn't find one at the store, so I think I'm just going to try pouring some ginger ale in plastic bags and then crushing it up later. Please don't explode. We'll see if that works. <laughs> So I think I'm going to make the jello salads first, just because they're going to take a little while to set. And I also want to work on the custards, because I know they need to be really nice and cool. So I have the ginger ale fruit salad, as well as the vegetable super salad, which both involve gelatin. The instructions for the ginger ale fruit salad are, soak gelatin in cold water five minutes and dissolve in boiling water. Add lemon juice, sugar, ginger ale. Cut grapes in half and remove seeds. Slice banana, peel and chop apple, separate oranges into sections and remove membranes. When ginger ale mixture begins to thicken, fold in fruit and nuts. Where did the nuts come from? Then the vegetable super salad involves dissolving prepared gelatin in boiling water, add vinegar and salt, place in refrigerator cabinet until mixture begins to thicken, then fold in celery, cabbage, carrot, and green pepper. Turn into mold and return to cabinet until ready to serve. I've never actually worked with gelatin before or made jello before. I know that's a really basic thing, but it just isn't my favorite thing when it comes to desserts, so it's not something that I've had a lot in my household. But it was all the rage in the 1930s. I feel like these sort of fruit dessert salads bother a lot of people and disgust a lot of people, but I've actually grown up eating things kind of similar to them. My mom and my grandmother both make a lot of very sweet salads that consist of like coconut and pineapple and mayonnaise and mini marshmallows and grapes, which is a very weird assortment of things and creates a very weird texture. <laughs> so the concept of having this really sweet kind of weirdly textured salad doesn't bother me too much. But as I said, I don't love gelatin or jello that much, so I'm not super confident that I'm going to love this. 
but it was such a staple in 1930s food that I feel like I need to make at least a couple of these. So I was so distracted by talking that I forgot to peel the apple before cutting it. So I'm gonna have this for lunch and I'm just gonna peel a new apple. <laughs> I almost forgot, I bought new knives for this video. So hopefully that'll make you guys happy. <laughs> it was a brand that was highly recommended in a single Reddit thread, so I think that really means a lot. I'm sure I edited a lot of that out, but this has taken me an embarrassingly long time to peel, which does not bode well for the rest of this video. The last, like half of that orange, really did not want to stay together, so there might be some spilled innards. <laughs> and now I just have to cut grapes in half until I have one cup worth of them. And I'm going to do this with my dull knife. As I said, I did buy sharper knives for this video. Everyone, like probably 45 people in the comments of that last video told me that sharp knives are technically safer. And I'm so mad at myself because I had a part in that video that I edited out for time where I said, I know sharp knives are technically safer, but I don't think they are when you're as clumsy as I am. And I edited that out to save time. And then that was like the only thing that people commented on, which is valid. Like I know people are just trying to help, but oh my God, I was really kicking myself. Those are all of my ingredients, and now I can begin prepping the gelatin. I found plain gelatin for the ginger ale fruit salad just fine, but I couldn't find the lemon flavored gelatin for the other one, so I prefer just jello. Which I know isn't exactly the same thing, because it's got a lot of sugar added, and I think it gets its flavor from extract, but hopefully it will be good enough. I want to use two tablespoons of gelatin. And then add a quarter cup of cold water. And it said let that stand for five minutes. So while that sits, I'm going to go ahead and cut up the ingredients I need for the vegetable super salad. <laughs> I really like chopping green peppers. I just find something super satisfying about it. Maybe it's because I've chopped so many small spicy peppers that they just seem so convenient by comparison that it makes me a little bit happy whenever I have to cut them up. <laughs> I still feel really uncomfortable using it, but I must say that doing this with a sharp knife is kind of nice. Celery is another one of those vegetables that I really do not particularly care for. I just hate how stringy it is. Wow, my knife does not like that. I agree with you, knife. But yeah, it's like eating hair that tastes like vegetables. Like, it just is not pleasant in any way, shape, or form, at least to me. So I just cheated a little bit. I looked at the instructions on the box of gelatin because I wasn't sure if I should add the ingredients over heat or take it off the heat and just use the boiling water to dissolve the gelatin. And seems like it's just used to dissolve it, so I'm going to leave it at that. And now it wants me to add lemon juice, sugar, and ginger ale. So two tablespoons sugar, one fourth of a cup of lemon juice. I would just like to say that I really do not care for the smell of unflavored gelatin. That's quite gross. <laughs> so I guess I'm just going to set this aside and wait until it thickens, and then I will add in everything else. Wow, I washed the cabbage earlier in the day and it totally just leaked all over everything. Do you think I'm allowed to cheat and reprint my recipe because it's now completely covered in cabbage water? I bought the smallest cabbage I could find because they charge you by the pound, and I do not need a whole pack of cabbage. But whatever I have left, I'm going to use to make that cabbage relish again, which I made in my last video, because that is so good. I really, really like it on sandwiches. I think that's about a cup of shredded cabbage, or at least that's as shredded as it's going to get. So now I can reference my dripping wet recipe, and it wants me to grate a half cup of carrot. Really not a fan of grating things. It kind of gives me flashbacks to when I've slipped and accidentally grated my finger, and also flashbacks to the time when my brother and I decided to make carrot cake, and we had to grate like four cups of carrots, and it was so time consuming and so painful. <laughs> like your hands get so sore after a while. So I try to avoid grating when I can, but I really feel like in this case, having shredded carrots or chopped carrots would really ruin the integrity of the recipe. I think that's close enough to a half cup. I just realized I'm not wearing my apron. Now everything will surely go much better because I'm properly dressed for the occasion. So my ginger ale mixture is still looking pretty watery, so I'm not sure if I messed up the heat requirements 
or something. So I think I'm gonna give it another maybe 15 minutes and in the meantime I will mix up the gelatin mixture for the vegetable salad. So it says dissolve prepared gelatin in boiling water, add vinegar and salt, place in refrigerator cabinet until mixture begins to thicken, then fold in vegetables. It said one package of gelatin, so hopefully package size hasn't changed in the last 80 years. That could be interpreted differently. Ooh, that's a good color. So the water for that is boiling. And I guess I can prepare the vinegar and salt. This is the most unwieldy bottle of vinegar. That's definitely two tablespoons, at least. It says to dissolve prepared gelatin in boiling water. And then it wants me to mix in the vinegar and salt. And then it just said to put in fridge until thickened. So I think while I wait for that, I'm going to try making the baked custard. It says, scald milk, beat eggs slightly, add sugar and salt. Slowly add hot water to eggs and sugar, add vanilla and pour into custard cups. Set cups in a pan of hot water, bake on slow oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit until firm. So I guess I will start by scalding a quart of milk. One quart is four cups. So it wants four cups of milk heated to a high temperature, which I can definitely do. I'm just trying to combine the yolks with the whites. Because it said beat eggs lightly, but I don't know what slightly meant in 1930s. It also requires a half cup of sugar and a quarter teaspoon of salt. I love these boxes of sugar. We usually get the bags at like BJ's or Costco, but they're so vintagey looking. Kind of collect old magazines and you'll oftentimes see uh, old Domino Sugar ads in them. It's been around forever. I think that's about as good as that's going to get and I'm just going to let it sit while I wait for the milk to boil or get close to boiling. I'm not sure what scald actually means. I ended up remaking the ginger ale gelatin mixture because it just wasn't thickening up and I thought I added too much liquid. And there's definitely less liquid now so I think I was right in that I did something wrong earlier. So I'm glad I remade it, but it's been about 15 minutes and still not really thickening. However, it has cooled, so it's no longer warm, and it feels thicker than water, though not something I would describe as being thick. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and add everything to it and pour it into my pans, and hopefully it works out. It told me to just fold this mixture in, but there isn't much folding that has to happen, since it's basically just liquid. And my bananas have all gone yucky since it's been sitting for so long. I really did not think this would take that long. I might actually put this into a Pyrex thing, and then I can kind of pour it into my molds. It just spilled so much. Then, I think I'm just going to try and lay the oranges on the bottom. I'm feeling a little bit discouraged right now, because that was one of the things that I thought was going to go really well and be really easy, and it's not really turning out the way I thought it would. It definitely didn't thicken up. So I hope it ends up working, otherwise I might just have piles of uncooked gelatin as opposed to a firm jello salad, which would be very, very disappointing. <laughs> I don't have a lot of time to reflect on that because I'm working on the custard right now. So it told me to mix the eggs, sugar, and salt together, to lightly beat them together, rather, um, and then slowly add the milk. I may have slightly overcooked my milk. I don't know how much of that you saw, but it just like exploded. I don't think that's what they meant by scald, but you know, I'll take it. So now let's slowly add this and try not to cook the eggs. This would be like someone who's lactose intolerant's worst nightmare, huh? Or maybe like biggest dream, depending on how you look at it. Oh, I have to heat up the oven too. I'm like a mess today also wants me to set them in a pan of warm water while they're cooking, so I need to set that up. So I'm going to pour it over the sink from this bowl into this Pyrex thing, and then hopefully I can pour it a little bit more accurately into the ramekins. It's the exact opposite of what I want to have happen. So I was just cleaning up and I looked at the box of Jell-O and it says it takes four hours to set. So I don't know how much it's going to thicken up in the next 
hour or so. So I think I might just mix in all of my vegetable-y things and then put it in the pan to set. So as I said earlier, I grew up with dishes quite similar to this, so it's not a super weird concept to me. But I don't think most people have had stuff like this. And I was talking to my mom about it, and she was very certain that most people had eaten either jello salads or mayonnaise salads, like the one with coconut and pineapple. I disagree with her, so I'd be curious to know if you've ever had anything like this before. And on a scale of 1 to 10, how weird do you think stuff like this is? Okay, I get why this has to be thickened, because if it isn't thickened, then it only holds together the topmost portion. Yeah, I wasn't really thinking about the fact that it being thickened helps suspend it when it is setting into a specific shape. We'll see. I'll stick this in the fridge and hopefully in four hours it will be a beautiful jello salad. <laughs> I think for now I'm going to focus on the chicken pie and the spinach casserole, but there's still the molasses cake, the maple walnut sauce, the raspberry cocktail, the luncheon canapé, the maple parfait, the pineapple raspberry aid, the cheese biscuit, and the salad dressing. So I've got my work cut out for me over the next couple of hours. And I think I'm just going to start by chopping up and cooking the potatoes and carrots for the chicken pie. I can't actually make the chicken pie until the oven is free. And right now there's still the custard in there. And I think it's going to be in there for another 10 or 15 minutes. But I can get those chopped and cooked. I can also start on the spinach casserole. I can make hard boiled eggs for this. And there's another recipe that requires hard boiled eggs too. So I think I'm going to get those started first. So I'm just going to pop these on a burner. And I know a bunch of people gave me tips for hard-boiled eggs, but I can't remember any of them, so I'm just going to do it the same way I did it last time, where I just keep them in the pot until the water boils, and then take them off and let them sit for 15 minutes before putting them in with cold water. It calls for two cups of cooked spinach, which is probably about 12 cups of raw spinach. So I might just keep adding to this um, until I get what I think are two cups worth of cooked spinach. And I actually really like spinach. I used to think I hated it, but it's grown on me a lot. However, I don't love the texture when it's cooked because it's kind of slimy. I really want to try new things with this. So we'll just have to see what I think. I think I'm also just going to prepare the mixture of spices for the white sauce, because that kind of threw me off uh, last time when I was scrambling to keep mixing the sauce, but also add things to it. So it requires one tablespoon of flour, one half teaspoon salt, one eighth teaspoon pepper, one quarter teaspoon paprika, and that's it. I'm quite curious to see what this will be like. I'm not usually the biggest fan of casseroles. I'm just so weird about texture that I like food to have defined shapes and to be separated, and you don't really get that with a casserole. All right, so now I can get started with the vegetables for the chicken pie. It needs one cup of cooked diced potatoes and one cup of cooked diced carrots. It also wants one cup of peas, and the only peas that I could find were in a can. Back to my favorite task of peeling. I really do enjoy peeling vegetables a lot more than I feel like I should. I need to find someone who really loves grating vegetables and then marry them and we can be a wonderful team at least when it comes to that. How the burners are getting up to temperature and there's still like a little bit of milk that solidified itself to the burner and it smells so bad. Like I truly can't put into words how awful that is. I was wondering why my butter was taking so long to melt and it's probably because I had it on the wrong burner. But the handle of that pan was very warm since it was hanging over the burner that was turned on. Carrots are like the most satisfying of the vegetables to peel. I don't know if that says something about me or not. At one point my dog had dental problems because she'd eaten a stick and it become lodged in her gums. So she couldn't have solid foods for like two weeks. And we usually give them carrots as treats. So they had to make her carrot puree so she could have that as a treat when the other dogs were getting normal carrots. How extra is that when you create what's effectively baby food for your sick dog? The reason I thought of that story is because I had to peel lots of carrots to create the carrot puree. The little beast is looking at me right now. She can smell the carrots. My butter has melted, so now I'm going to add spinach to the pan. Also, I totally forgot about my eggs, so they're probably boiling away for a lot longer than they should have been, and they might end up being really dry. I am really not cut out for multitasking. But you can't do this without multitasking. It takes you like years to make a single meal. At least when your meal has like 13 courses like this one. This is where all the action is. I put in so much spinach and it's just like melted down to that amount. I may have slightly overcooked the spinach. I don't think I've ever cooked spinach before. I realize I seem really isolated based off of what I've made. I just don't cook things that I don't enjoy. Why on earth would you eat that when you could have crisp, fresh, delicious spinach? I just don't get it. 
I have to get the custards out of the oven and I don't want to because I think I'm going to spill boiling water on myself. But there's no one else here to do it for me and it's very sad. <laughs> custards are out. Probably slightly overcooked, but it is what it is. <laughs> so now I'm just going to cut up my potato. Actually, while I work on this, I can boil the water for this because they all need to be cooked. Typically, I would like roast vegetables in the oven. I think that makes them taste better, but I have a feeling by cooked, they mean boiled. See, the problem with me in cooking is that usually I follow a very detailed recipe that takes you through absolutely everything you need to do and really holds your hand, or I just kind of make it up and do it the way that I know it tastes good, like roasting vegetables. You don't need a recipe for that. But I don't know if that's what they want me to do, and I want to follow their instructions, so it's hard. So I've now moved the custards. I'm going to let them cool outside of the fridge for a little bit, and then transfer them to the fridge in a couple of minutes. And now the oven is free, so I can go ahead and start cooking my chicken. This recipe called for a four to five pound chicken, but they didn't have whole chickens of that size at my grocery store, and I didn't particularly want to deal with a whole chicken, so I just purchased chicken breasts. I know they're lower in fat, so they might not produce as much broth. We'll just have to see, but I'm going to put all my chicken breasts in here and then pop them in the oven for about half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. So now I'm gonna start on making the white sauce for the spinach casserole. And this requires melting butter and then adding flour, salt, pepper, and paprika and mixing well, stirring constantly to prevent lumping. Add 1 4 cup grated cheese. And I conveniently made up my little mixture ahead of time, so this is ready to be added. That's melted butter. Now here, you can probably hear it bubbling, but you can't see it. You still can't see it. Um, I just have the carrots and potatoes, so I'm gonna boil them for probably like five minutes, and then I will drain the water and saute them a little bit. So they've got a little bit of color and a little bit more flavor. Is that supposed to happen? I think I may have ruined this. So they said that I should add grated cheese, but I didn't specify what type of cheese to get, so I purchased sharp cheddar since I thought that would taste the best with spinach. But I gather by white sauce, they mean some sort of white cheese. So I may have done that slightly wrong. <laughs> so yeah, I'm kind of weird about cheese. The texture thing strikes again. That I like cheese, but I don't like melted cheese that makes those little stringy things when you take a bite of it. So I like cook pizza to death and use very little cheese, so it never happens. <laughs> That looks really good. It's definitely not white, but they have you add paprika, so I don't think it's gonna end up white even if you buy a different type of cheese. Stay. Do any other dog owners out there ever find yourself talking to inanimate objects like they're dogs? And they never listen, because they're not dogs. Granted, sometimes my dogs don't listen either. They're definitely softer than they usually are when I make them. And by when I usually make them, I mean the last time I filmed one of these videos. Guys, there's still yolk in the middle. I don't think these are done. I feel okay putting them in the casserole since it's going to go in the oven for like half an hour, but I don't think I feel comfortable using these for the other appetizers. So I'm probably going to make up a couple more and just leave them in longer. Instructions say I should put a layer of spinach at the bottom. And I think there are two layers of spinach in total, so I can put half the spinach on the bottom. It's gonna be kind of a sparse layer. It's close enough. Then I want a layer of sliced eggs. So now it wants me to take half my sauce. Like there just really isn't a lot to this. I feel like this recipe needs to be doubled. There just isn't enough sauce. Then it wants it topped with breadcrumbs. And I'm gonna go generously with the cheese. I just don't know in what world that is considered a casserole. So I think now I'm going to make the fruit salad dressing. It wants four tablespoons of flour. I'm not sure why it doesn't just say a quarter cup, because I believe that is the same. And then it's also three tablespoons of sugar. So it wants a smooth paste. Also, in case it wasn't clear, this is the fruit salad dressing, so it's meant to be paired with the ginger ale fruit salad. It kind of boggles my mind that this used to be considered a salad and was like part of a salad menu, yet there were way fewer problems with obesity back then. Like, how? Because all of this stuff is so bad for you. So now I'm going to pour a cup of this juice into a pan and heat it. I'm gonna get it all over the counter too because that really adds to the whole process. I currently have chicken in the oven, I have eggs that I'm redoing, and I also have some pineapple juice on the stove heating up so I can make my salad dressing. And I thought in the meantime I would take on something easy, which is the red raspberry cocktail. 
Actually, maybe I will because it sounds like my pineapple juice is up to temperature. And if that's the case, then I have to add flour mixture and stir constantly until thickened. Oh, there are eggs in this. I probably should have prepared those before I started this. I'm just going to pull this off the heat for a sec while I beat some eggs. Alright, let's try this again. Now I don't have a double boiler, so I'm just going to cook this on a really, really low heat. It smells very good, very zesty and pineapple-y. So I'm going to transfer this to a bowl and then I will revisit it when it's closer to dinner time so I can mix the cream into it. So now I think I can get started on something new and I'm thinking of making the molasses cake now that the oven is free. I just took the dressing off the burner so now I can put all of my focus into this which is probably for the best given how today has gone. So for this I need a third of a cup. to make a beaten mixture of egg and molasses. If you have a jar of molasses in your house and it isn't stuck to something, then I am thoroughly impressed. <laughs> no matter how much I seem to clean the jar, it always leaks a little bit off the lid and sticks to something. It only has three teaspoons of spices in it, which I feel like is really minimal, but hopefully it tastes good. It's very weird because it smells so good and gingery over here. And then behind me I have the chicken stock boiling down and it just smells like chicken so, so strongly. I think it is time for a bigger bowl. Even though that means I have to clean molasses mixture out of two different things. Officially greased and let's drop this in here. Also, I don't think I mentioned it um, just because I don't talk about it all the time, but I use gluten free flour for this, so my results might be a little bit different than they should be. And it goes for half an hour. This, the stock, I think it's boiled off quite a bit. I don't know how many cups that is exactly, but I think I'm going to go ahead and add the flour and a little bit of cold water. Okay, apparently two tablespoons of water is not enough. And I think the reason you do this is so you don't bite into a lump of flour, which is highly unpleasant. We'll see how it goes. I might end up adding a little bit more flour. So I added a little bit more flour because I thought it was too thin. And I made it as a little slurry, but it's all separated into big lumps. It's not what's supposed to happen. So it's a little lumpy, but that's going to have to do. So chicken pie is another one of those things that I've never had before, since it involves crust of some sort. It's not usually gluten-free. But that being said, if you do have celiac disease, don't let that stop you from trying recipes. Like, you can always just use gluten-free flour and see how it turns out. And if it doesn't turn out, then you haven't lost a whole lot. Except for like $12 worth of gluten-free flour because it's really expensive. But it's still worth experimenting. I know a while ago I decided that I wanted to try eclairs because I'd never had them and I couldn't find anywhere that had them gluten-free. So I found a really detailed eclair recipe and I followed it and I replaced the flour with some gluten-free stuff and they were delicious. Like they weren't as puffy as they should have been, but they rose and they were filled with custard and they were just really good. It made me really happy that I'd done that. So definitely like, don't let your dietary restrictions stop you from trying out new recipes and food. Don't let anything stop you from trying new things. This is kind of a tangent that I hadn't planned on going into, but the comments I got on my last video, a lot of them were really positive and wonderful and I really, really appreciate them. But some of them were just straight up nasty. Like people just who were clearly very angry by the fact that I wasn't good at cooking and wanted to make sure that I knew I wasn't good at cooking. I know I'm not the best cook, like clearly. I have eyes <laughs> and a mouth. <laughs> but I wasn't presenting myself as an expert. I was presenting myself as a beginner who was doing something fun that I was unfamiliar with. And a lot of people really put me down. And I have enough confidence that that isn't going to stop me from filming another one of these <laughs> or cooking in general. But a lot of people don't have that confidence and they don't have the positive audience that I have to balance that out. So the fact that someone else might get comments like that, it might make them give up on something that they're really excited about. It just makes me so sad. And I don't know if people leaving negative comments really realize the impact they have or if they get off on the impact they have but it's just a real kind of bummer. I remember leaving comments 
kind of demeaning people when I was much younger because I was really insecure and putting other people down made me feel better about myself. But a lot of the comments I get like that now, they're from people who are older than me, from people who have children my age. And it's just really baffling to me that someone can do that and feel okay with themselves when they're at that age. Not that it's good to be doing it at any age, it's just I feel a little bit more justified when you're young and stupid. So as I said, I've made my fair share of mistakes and I've said my fair share of stupid things. For me now, at 21, the thought of going to someone's video or Instagram who's clearly very new at sewing and presenting themselves that way and telling them that they should just give up and that they're awful, oh, the thought of that just makes me feel sick. I just don't know how people do that. And if you really don't know how your comments affect people, then, you know, that's fine, that's excusable. But a lot of them are clearly, like, intentional putting people down. And it just, it makes me feel sad for other people who might be getting comments like that, because I can deal with it, but some other people might not be able to. Okay, so that is chicken done. I may have just spilled chicken juice all over the floor when I was trying to dump off the excess on the plate. Classic me. Now I'm just mixing the potatoes and the carrots in with the chicken. I may have overcooked the potatoes slightly, they're kind of like mush, but they should be tasty mush. I'm is escaping. Now I'm going to pour the juice over top. Fingers crossed that I managed to do this without pouring it all over the counter. Shit. Oh my gosh. Why am I incapable of pouring things? Okay, so I'm going to put this in the fridge to try and make it congeal a little bit, and then I will come back and do the top for it a little bit later. So I was just cleaning up, and I came across a can of peas. And do you know what the peas are supposed to go in? This. They're a really awful color. I figured they would be closer than frozen peas, but now that I look at them and smell them, I should have bought frozen peas. I'm going to kick out some of the easier recipes like the pineapple raspberry aid as well as a red raspberry cocktail. You need two cups of raspberries, I probably have a little less than that, four tablespoons of granulated sugar, and mint leaves. Four tablespoons is a friggin' lot of sugar. I don't know if that really counts with cooking because that was incredibly easy to make, but I'm going to put those in the fridge and keep them fresh until later. So I want to finish the chicken pie and get it in the oven along with the casserole. So I looked up their pastry recipe at the back of the book and it's for layered pastry. I know I just said you can do anything you want with gluten-free flour, but gluten-free flour doesn't do that. <laughs> so I'm going to make a normal pastry just to go on top. I'm sorry if that's cheating, but that's really the only way that going to turn out. And if I'd read their pastry instructions before starting this project, I probably would have picked something else just so I could make it accurately. For some reason, the sound of chopping butter into flour is very appealing for my dogs. It wants me to roll this out to a one quarter, excuse me, they want me to roll this out to a one quarter inch crust, which I'm skeptical of that happening, but I will do my absolute best. So I'm going to try and put it between layers of wax paper and we'll see if that will work. I think the chances of me being able to get this on top of the pie are very, very slim. So I think what I'm going to do instead is actually make mine the way they show theirs in a picture in the book. They have theirs covered with bits of pastry that are made out of cookie cutters. Uh, so they've got star shapes and moon shapes. So I think I'm going to try doing this, and since they're smaller, maybe I'll be able to pick them up. <laughs> This I can definitely do. Fortunately, I don't have a moon cookie cutter, but I can definitely do the stars. So there it is. So while I have this mess out, I think it would be a good time to work on the cheese biscuits. So for this, you want to mix and sift flour, salt, cheese, and baking powder with a knife or pastry blender. Cut in the shortening, add milk gradually, and mix into a soft dough. I need two cups of flour. Just enough shortening left. So I'm using cheddar cheese for this. It said to grate it. I found some that was pretty finely shredded, so I'm hoping I can get away with that. And it looked like a lot of cheese, but it kind of just blends in there. 
My only previous experience with making cheesy biscuits was when I altered an eclair batter mix. And they were really good, but they had so much moisture in them that they went moldy after like three days. So I went to have some, and they were all fuzzy, and it was very disappointing and kind of gross. So I haven't made them since. <laughs> I think that consistency is really perfect. It's not like super soft, but it's gluten-free flour, so it's to be expected. We don't have any biscuit cutters, so I think I'm just going to use this glass and use the rim of it to punch them out. And I'm thinking that there's no way I'm going to be able to get these onto a greased pan. So I'm probably just going to leave them on the wax paper and then put them into the oven from here. I don't know what is up with me and eggs today, but apparently they hate me. After reboiling eggs, I ended up with one that looks good, and the other two, getting the shell off, was just terrible. I don't know what was in the water today, or what was in the eggs, but it wasn't going well. However, I have one that looks decent. This is the good egg. This is the one we're going to be very careful with. So these are going to be used for the luncheon canapé. It consists of boiled eggs cut in half lengthwise with the yolks removed. Press yolks through potato ricer and mash up with fork. Add pepper, chives, and butter. Moisten with equal parts of mayonnaise and ketchup. Fill whites with this mixture. Chill thoroughly. Saute pies of bread and butter and spread thinly with anchovy paste. Place on small plates and on each piece of toast place one half of a stuffed egg. Sprinkle with paprika and garnish with parsley. Now it wants me to moisten this with mayonnaise and something called ketchup, which I looked up and it's just ketchup. And I did look up recipes for making your own ketchup. And it turns out that ketchup used to be made with nuts and eggs and all sorts of things. It sounds a lot more like a salsa that does a sauce. However, I decided to take on so many other recipes that I opted not to make it myself, and instead I'm going to be using store-bought tomato ketchup. <laughs> and shockingly, I still have some mayonnaise left from my first video. We haven't gone through it all just yet. Add about that much mayonnaise, and then we need equal parts of ketchup. It's very, very important. <laughs> Yum. Well, it looks moist all right. It also looks like a vomit. It probably doesn't taste that bad. But it doesn't look good. Now, even though these look wonderful, the main portion of this dish is a circle of bread, just sautéed in butter, and then spread with anchovy paste. Yeah, I know. I'm excited, too. If you're wondering why I picked a dish I'm fairly confident I won't like, it's because I think it makes it interesting. And I do feel like this was something that would have been considered normal during that period, and I want to try it. Now, I think I'm only going to make two of these. But if they're in really high demand, then I can make more. <laughs> While I wait for my butter to heat up, I can begin on the pineapple raspberry aid. So I have crushed pineapple. There goes my butter. Let me pop these on. My bread is sautéed, and I will make these beautiful in just a moment, but I want to finish this first. So I also need one cup of water, one to one lemon. Apparently I have a bunch of paper cuts on this lemon, just found them. And also wants me to add one cup of raspberry juice. I could not find pure raspberry juice anywhere. So I'm using some crayon raspberry juice, but nowadays all juice is apple juice. So it probably didn't make that much of a difference. <laughs> Ooh, it's very pretty. I bet this would be really good with alcohol. Alcohol makes everything better. My mom taught me that. I'm kidding, she didn't teach me that. It's just obvious. <laughs> I'm totally joking, I very rarely drink. But for now, I'm just gonna pop this in the fridge and then I will add the ice cube later on. Well, everything's out of the oven now. Some of it looks good, some of it doesn't, because you're gonna have to wait until the end to see it. What I will say is that the chicken pie leaked all over the biscuits. Anyway, I'm gonna make the maple parfait and the maple walnut sauce. For the maple parfait, it wants me to heat syrup in a double boiler, cook over water until the mixture coats the spoon. Then it wants me to cool, add salt, vanilla, and fold in whipped cream. And then for the maple walnut sauce, it's basically just cooking syrup over a burner until the mixture threads from spoon, and then adding walnuts to it. So the maple parfait just needs half a cup of maple syrup. And I actually have a bowl for the whites to go in this time. I did that wrong. There we go. I know people talk about the method using a water bottle for this, but it's really not that hard to separate yolks manually. I think it's way more convenient than bringing 
a bottle into the equation. Those are my beaten egg yolks, and I'm just going to pour them into this. Before doing anything too exciting, I'm also going to whip cream, so I need two cups of cream for this. And I actually need cream for the salad dressing, too. I just tried to put this cap back on this. That's not gonna work. All right, so I finished whipping the cream. So now I'm going to go ahead and pour the maple syrup over the eggs, mix them together. Now I have this pan free, so I'm gonna use that for the maple walnut sauce. So I'm gonna pour in two cups of syrup. While that thickens up, I'm gonna add a cup of cream in with my dressing mixture from earlier, if you can call it that. So the dressing is now done. Uh, I haven't tasted it yet, but I'm kind of curious to see what it will taste like. So I'm going to pop this back in the fridge. It better not overflow. Boiling sugar makes me nervous. While I wait for my maple syrupy things, I'm going to start plating other stuff, like my gingerbread. So hopefully this will slip right out. Yay! I also have my beautiful jelly molds, which I guess I can turn out. Hmm. I have bad news, guys. And I'm going to place this with ham. Because you know what they say. Vegetables, jello, and ham. Match made in heaven. This is giving me nightmare flashbacks to the time I tried to make caramel. I couldn't get it thick enough, so it was really, really runny and sugary. And then when I kept reattempting it, I just couldn't get it to stay caramelized. Like it would just turn back and forth between caramel and sugar. It was so annoying. Oh, shoot. I totally burned that. That is just straight up burned. So I totally burned that sauce and I don't have enough left to make it again. So no maple sauce on things. So everything's kind of gone to crap, but I'm going to pull through and I'm going to finish off my little anchovy things. All that's missing is the anchovy paste, which is a thing that exists and you can still purchase on Amazon. I've never had anchovies before. And my mom told me last night that she's deathly allergic to them. So, I'm not super keen to try them. Because <laughs> this would be a really, really sad last meal. And I can't even puncture the tube. It's telling me not to. Something I will give them credit for is that it says adding depth to flavors. And then has a little fish under the ocean. That's not what I thought it was going to be. So now we'll do the parfaits and then it's done. Guess what I just spilled all over the floor. At least my ice works. one of those moments where you just look around and regret everything that has brought you there and regret it so strongly that you forget any other feelings can possibly exist? Because I'm having one of those moments right now. <laughs> I've spent over $100 and all day working on this meal and I don't want to eat any of it because it all looks disgusting. And everything in this house smells like burnt maple syrup and my burnt up dreams for a good video. <laughs> but alas, it is time to taste all of this. I'm gonna start with the spinach thing. Why does it smell like that? I thought I would like this, but it smells really, really bad. That tastes so bad that it makes me wanna throw up a little bit. It smells like rotten vegetables and egg. Like, it's just vile. <laughs> like, I'm embarrassed that I had any part in making that. <laughs> I guess I will try my salads. These did not turn out of the molds properly. I don't know what happened but 
this is not what it was supposed to be. It tastes like the relish I made last time, just with a slimy coating of jello. Let's try this one. I don't understand why you would do this to fruit. I really, really don't. And even if it had sat properly, it's still just like fruit covered in something that looks like bodily discharge. That one tastes okay. Like the fruit juices kind of blend in with the gelatin, so it's not bad. But I definitely wouldn't recommend that over just making yourself a fruit salad. This is definitely the winner so far. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but it tastes good. Uh, definitely better than everything else. <laughs> now I will try one of the biscuits. Now these look pretty flat and dense, so I don't have high hopes, but I will try them. It just tastes like floury nothingness. It's very, very dry. I don't think I would make that again. <laughs> Pose, I can try the luncheon canapes, which I'm not excited about because of the anchovy paste and also that weird egg mixture but I will try a single bite. A single bite. <laughs> My body isn't gonna let me eat that. I just tried really hard, and it's just, nope, <laughs> it comes right back up. I just realized that I totally forgot to try the salad dressing, so I'll try a little bit of that. And this was for the fruit salad. That tastes really nice, very light, uh, subtle pineapple flavors. And now I can try the gingerbread thing. I'm really hoping that this will be good. The texture of it's a little bit dry, but it's nice. However, my issue with this is that it's not that flavorful. So it just tastes pretty flowery. It's definitely edible, but that's not something I'd be tempted to make again. These were supposed to start off the meal, and these are the cocktails. So we'll see how this is. It's so weird, because it's incredibly sweet from the sugar, but there's also half a lime squeezed onto it, so it's very bitter. Like it makes my face pucker a little bit, but it also tastes nice. I'd say that's worth trying which is high praise considering this meal so far. Sticking with the raspberry theme, I can try a little bit of this. It's good, it just tastes like a kind of bland fruit punch. And maybe if I had a better raspberry juice that was a little bit more potent, it would taste brighter and stronger, but I don't, so it's just kind of bland. Now I think as a finale, I'm going to try the custard and one of these, and I have high, high hopes for these. If these are not delicious, I'm going to be very, very sad. The custard has a film on top, which I think is my fault for not covering it, but it looks like it's cooked nicely. So it has the texture that custard is supposed to have, but it tastes a little bit achy. <laughs> I don't think there's any way that this can be delicious enough to make up for everything else, but let's hope. <laughs> it's good. It doesn't have a super strong maple flavor, so you end up just getting the texture and kind of undercurrent of whipping cream, but it is better than everything else here. <laughs> Maybe I can just have four of these for dinner. So this definitely didn't go as planned. I feel like the last video I did like this didn't go to plan either, but it didn't go to plan in a way that was entertaining and funny, whereas this is just really, really sad because everything tastes disgusting and I worked really hard on it. And it's just bad. And I'm probably not gonna cry because I've got like four of these that I can eat. But if I didn't have four of these, I'd be very upset. At the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal, but man, this did not go as planned. Super discouraging and nowhere near how I thought it would go. I really thought the jello salads would be a lot easier than they ended up being. Something clearly didn't set properly with them. So it isn't even like eating pure jello where the texture feels intentional. It's just this binding agent for a bunch of stuff. The spinach egg thing, there is something wrong with that recipe. That recipe should not exist. That is disgusting. <laughs> and then for these guys, I think it's probably just a case of gluten-free flour getting in the way. They're just very dense and floury tasting as opposed to being uh, soft or even firm and delicious. They don't have a whole lot of flavor. My custard didn't end up working and the gingerbread is again It's just very dry which could be because it's gluten-free, but I haven't had that problem with gingerbread I've made gluten-free in the past. So I think that's where I'm gonna end this video. Thank you so much for watching I'm sorry this was such a disaster and that nothing really turned out and if you enjoyed it or feel sorry for me because I will totally take pity at this point then giving this video a like and a comment really helps me out I was gonna say if you want to support me on Patreon, I can make more videos like this, but I am not making more videos like this. This is it. This is the ending note of awful. <laughs>
But I do have a Patreon if you want early access to videos um, as well as access to exclusive content. So thanks again for watching and I will talk to all of you very soon.